Uh, so Stacy, tell us, let's start from the beginning. What were you like as a child growing up in Jamaica? <laughs> like this. <Yeah. laughs> um, no, actually I was very quiet. Don't laugh. I know this is funny, but I mean, it's true. Um, I was, uh, I was very like shy, extremely shy. And, um, but when I get to know somebody, um, you know, I'm, I just become very loud like this. I'm like <laughs> this, but, uh, yeah, I was very shy. Um, and I think I was shy because I didn't fit in. Right. Right. And I was, you know, always being teased and stuff and not being, not fitting in. I felt uncomfortable. So, you know, I would always be, you know, a little leery of being around people. Not a little, I would be very leery of being around people. But, uh, you know, when I had my friends and all of that, or made friends, it was like <laughs> the biggest mouth ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the brightest ball in the room. <laughs> right? Yeah. What about as a less ad, as an adolescence when you moved to Toronto? How did things change? Um, I was still shy. I was still a little bit shy because even coming to Toronto, I was always being you know made fun of as well. Uh, but like I said, once I make friends, um, then I become this you know. Then I my sh you know, I become very outgoing. Right. Yeah. I was I was actually very outgoing, but is this because I'm you know? people making fun of me and all that stuff, um, I would, sh you know, like, I would get shy and reserved and, like, you know, hid, like, right. hidden in the way. Yeah. And um, also, I got more mouthier when I got to Toronto. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got real mouthy. So, like, just by way of defending myself, um, I just got real lippy. Mm -hmm. Like, extra lippy. I think it's a Jamaican thing anyways. <laughs> right? But it's, it was just like, it was just turned up in, in you know, when I got to Canada. <laughs> now, tell us about your start in the modeling career and, and how that all started and how Jean-Paul Gaultier... Um... Ooh, Van, you want me to tell you that? Yeah. Oh, because you know there's a movie coming out, right? Oh, that's yeah. that's that's later oh, in the no, question. No, okay. we, we're going to talk about that too, yes. though. Um, okay, I, I won't be able to tell you the full-on story that I would love to tell you guys, because it's... <laughs> but um, I will say this, um, I wanted to pursue modeling. I wasn't discovered, I wasn't, um, you, know, you know, discovered in the mall and all that good stuff where it's like, oh my gosh, you'd be a model, you know, and being approached and given a card, it wasn't like that, it was more so, what the hell is that? You know, run away, right? But I've always wanted to do modeling and um, I pursued it. So I'm self-trained, I taught myself how to walk and I taught myself how to pose. I did all that myself, and I also um, went to agencies on my own, and yeah, but I, I can't give away the entire story, but I'll give you some of that. But um, that's how it all started. That's how I started. But Jean-Paul Gaultier, yes, he definitely. Mm-hmm, yeah, so when I got to Paris, so my journey um, started in Jamaica, where I was uh, training myself then, and then, um, you know, uh, I tried, you know, uh, doing it in North America, it didn't work out, and um, I figured, you know what? I'm gonna go to the fashion capital of the world, <laughs> right? So I took my behind to Paris, <laughs> and um, and I did everything all over again. And um, at some point, uh, I went to a casting, and there you go. I met. Well, yeah. I, okay, I can't say it, but yes, Mr. Gaultier, yes, gave me, booked me. <laughs> <laughs> we love him. Oh yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, yes. What are oh did a, did a lot for me? Yes. What are some of the other highlights uh, in the 90s with your career? Okay, first of all, it's in the late 90s because I'm still in denial. I'm 29. 27. I thought you were 27. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm 29. I lied. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are some of the highlights? Some of the highlights. Oh, my gosh. So Madonna was like my first show I walked in, which was insanity. Um, what else? Uh, what, is, what is the other highlight? Grace Jones. Grace Jones. Yes, I, I worked with her, and which is like major because, you know, she's also a fellow Jamaican and that was, you know, something that I aspired to be like as well. You know, she was also very different looking and, well, I don't think she was different looking, but, you know, in this world, you know, she was considered different looking. So, um, you know, to be able to, you know, see like, I don't want to use the word idol, but to see the person that I looked up to um, and to be able to work with her, like that just blew my mind um what else uh d like doing shows for like todd Oldlum. oh he's such an amazing man he's, he's a really really nice person sweetheart um he was also another person that believed in me you know and uh you know gave me the opportunity and gave me the chance um who else uh worked for alexander mcqueen um rest his soul but <laughs> that was a very 
crazy experience, uh, but uh, it was <laughs> it was a great opportunity as well. Um, I walked as uh, a show where like all the models were um, we were like tight like lions. So he actually had the makeup and hair do us like lions. Like it was insane, dope show. So um, and it was in like a in, in a warehouse building in London, um, in an underground like dungeon warehouse with like a burnt up car, like real burnt up, like it was insane. It was wow. dope, dope, dope. Music was off the chain too, cause it's all about the music when you walk in the runway, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, um, yeah, there's like, there's a lot, like what do you wanna? I mean, maybe some of the, your favorite designers you've worked with. Oh my, so my favorite obviously is Jean-Paul Gaultier. Right. Um, also my favorite is the real Alexander McQueen. Uh, no offense to the other designers after him, but he he he's one of my like he the original is my favorite because um, he's he's a he's genius genius yeah genius uh, who else um, I love um, uh, Comme du Garçon I love uh, Yoji Yamamoto um, I also love uh, I, I, there's quite you know there's different 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 yeah. different ones Veronique Loa uh, who's based out of Paris as well she's a wicked designer um, Gilles Rosier. Uh, who else? Um, oh, in Toronto, uh, Evan Bedell in Canada, dope. I mean, he's also a genius, you know, like he doesn't even work with patterns or anything like that. He's free-handed, which is like, and the things that he comes up with and like the, the cut, you know, the craftsmanship, mm -hmm. he's on point. Um, Arthur Mendoza, who's another Canadian designer as well. Um, he's not like designing anymore and I'm so saddened by this. I've been trying to talk him to like get into the game. I'm like, okay, just make me everything. I'll wear it for you, okay? <laughs> Um, there's also Sunny Fang, who's also a Canadian designer from Vogue. Um, in terms of uh, American designers, uh, I like, uh, let me see, Jason Wu, right? Dope designer. Um, you know, sharp, like is simple but sharp with a little bit of edge construction. Zach Posen um, as well. Um, yeah, like, I, I, there's a lot of designers that I love. Yeah, but my, my top two favorites are definitely Jean Paul Gaultier and the original. Alexander McQueen. Why is it that so many amazing models come out of Canada? Um, I think so many amazing models come out of Canada is because it's, I mean, it's diverse, but also, so there's like, you know, you could get like the different looks, right? <laughs> Even though I'm not Canadian like that, but yeah, you could get, you know, it's diverse, right? Like, uh, like right now there's Grace Mahari. You guys familiar with her, right? Dope chick. She's uh, Eth um, Somalian, I think, or Ethiopian. Um, you know, there's, there's Coco Rocha, who's not your typical white girl, right? Um, I mean, Linda Evangelista, who was also not your typical white girl, right? Um, you know, oh, Yasmin Warsami, right? Uh, you know, there's a diverse mix of models, first of all. Um, and it's like, we're like thoroughbreds. <laughs> I like, Canadian models are like just, they just have a different look to them and a different vibe and energy to them, right? Um, professionalism, they definitely have that on lock. And I've noticed that because of working with uh, so many different models all over the world, like one thing with Canadian models, they're very professional, right? And they're just like, you know, they come in, they get the job done and they get their check and they're out. You know what I mean? And like, I, I respect that because at the end of the day, modeling is a business, right? You know, the fun stuff is all great and all the runways and like, and trust me, I love it. Uh, and the, you know, the photo, the, the, the pictures and the photo posing and all that. Not for, I'm talking, sorry, I'm talking my workshop mode. Uh, the, the, the editorials and, you know, doing editorials and doing runways is all fun and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's a business. And what I do realize with Canadian, and notice with Canadian models, uh, the majority of them that I just, those that I just mentioned and others that I've seen as well, that I don't even know like that, but from what I see, they're very professional and they're very on point and it's about their business and they treat it as such. So I really commend that and I think also that's why too, a lot of our girls get so much work and continue to get so much, get work, and also they have longevity right. in the industry, which is very important because as a model, you, you're, you uh, the lifespan of a model is usually like three months, right? Like if they're not feeling you, if they don't think that you can make the money, if they don't think that you can make that money, they're gonna give you like a three month trial, right? So, so you know, with Canadian girls, it's like, you know, I mean, I've been, been going at it like, I, even although, yes, I wasn't born in Canada, but I was raised in Canada, in Canada I've been going out of 23 years now. Yes, I'm 29. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the Canadian designers, you mentioned some of your favorites. Yes. And um, we had a conversation earlier today. Oh, Untitled? I love Untitled, too. Oh, wait. How can I forget him? He's from Montreal. Gagnon. 
Ah, uh, Denis. Yeah, so talented. I mean, <clears throat> our conversation before, it's like, you know, Canada isn't really known for being a, a capital in the world for, for fashion designers. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so what, what do you feel some of the struggles must be for these designers you love and work with from Canada? Well, the struggle is, I mean, uh, like they're not being seen, they're not getting the exposure, and they're not making any money, right? And uh, the thing is, it's really important for the Canadian fashion community to come together and really support, you know, these designers, young designers, and also young and upcoming designers. Like right now, uh, we were speaking about it earlier, there's about like five fashion weeks going on in Toronto, which is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there should be one big fashion week for Canada, right? Whether it be in Toronto or Montreal, whichever you choose, they cho they ch you know, choose somewhere and have one big fashion week, right? And have like, you know, um, it's really important to have Canadian designers that have made it outside of Canada. So people like Mark Fast, oh, by the way, that's another one of my favorite designers. Yeah. Um, so like Mark Fast, um, you know, or them, Jason Wu, uh, D Squared, you know, like have at least one of those designers come back to Canada for Fashion Week and actually show at Fashion Week to give the Canadian um, uh, fashion industry that leverage and that like that um, spotlight, it, that spotlight yeah. right? So that's one, right? Another thing is like they need to put money into the Canadian fashion and, fa and uh, the Canadian designers and Canadian Fashion Week to showcase the Canadian designers. Money needs to go into it, right? Not no, not no just worried about getting sponsors and like pocketing the money, right? No, put it in the designers, like really, you know, promote them. Right, really give them the opportunity. Get, make sure that there's buyers, you know, from outside of Canada as well attending the shows. Make sure that there's like fashion editors. Yeah, try to get Miss, not try to get her. Get what's your name from Vogue? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, what's it? Yeah, that one. Anna Winter. <laughs> get Anna Winter. Get these fashion editors. You know what I mean? Get Teen Vogue. Get, uh, you know, get whatever. Get Vogue. Get Elle magazine. Get these big fashion editors that go to all the other shows, fashion weeks. Get them to come to Toronto, uh, come to our Fashion Week as well, right? So, you know, that's not happening. And because that's not happening, it's like, you know, we're not being taken seriously. And it's really messed up because there are so many amazing talents in Canada, right? I mean, look at who comes out of Canada. The designers I just mentioned and the models I just mentioned. Look at those, look yeah. at those people that come out of Canada. There's some serious people that are bigwigs out there that is Canadian, right? But for some reason, you know, like, you know, we're not getting that, 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 uh, that, that um, you know, that spotlight, that exposure. Thank yeah. you. Right. So we need to, like, get our people back, get our designers that have made a name for themselves, get them back out here for a fashion week, the fashion week here, have them actually show, not just come and sit at the front row and look cute, mm -hmm. actually have them show their collection at the Canada Fashion Week as well. Right. Also get like the models to come back as well. Get like the Grace Maharis. Get like you know. Get like the Coco Rochas to walk the runway, not sit and look cute again in front in in the, in the front row. They always have me sitting there, you know, in the front row. I'm, I'm so sick of it. You know how many times I just want to get up and just go on the runway. I think I think I saw you do that at Tom actually. Oh, I do. Yeah, I actually. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yay! Yeah. Some yeah. great energy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, like actually, you know get the models that have made a name for themselves that are Canadian outside of Canada, get them to come back and walk the runway too for, for these designers. Not just exclusive for one designer, you know, like a couple designers. But we're, you know, we need to, you know, work with each other to give, you know, to, 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 to put Canada out there on that map because we deserve to be out there like that. We deserve it. We have too many like fabulous and amazing people that has made a name for themselves that comes out of Canada Right, and we get too much credit for us to really not get no credit in our fashion community, you know, at for home. our fashion weeks. Yeah, at home for so sure. So I'm very like passionate about it. So I love that. <laughs> well, hopefully things do change because there I is so much so. talent, and it always seems not just in the fashion world, but like in any art form, it seems you have to go to the states to make it or yes. elsewhere. And it's like we need to be able to, you know, uh, cultivate that energy and and that. Uh, focus on Canadian being in Canada. The thing is about why a lot of us leave and go outside of Canada to like make it is because there is not much opportunities here uh, to make it here, right? It's fine to leave the country and go make it, but the thing is, come back. Right. Come back. You know what I mean? Right? Come back and like, you know, you know and, and, and the, like, whoever is putting on the fashion weeks, they need to invest in the people that have, you know, left and, you know, made it. They need to invest in them, come back to help build the, build the fashion community. I agree. Thank you.
Now, aside from all the modeling stuff, you do a multitude of other things, and you're no stranger to the big screen and the small screen. What have been some of the highlights in film and television? Okay, so some of the highlights have been um, in film. So uh, I did The Fifth Element, which was like my first movie. And then I did a French film, actually, where um, I played a, a 10-year-old boy. Yes, I played a boy. <laughs> I remember when you're like, oh, yeah, we want you to play a boy. I'm like, what? <laughs> but I'm a girl. <laughs> And they're like, yes, but you want to play a boy? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, I played a homeless boy. And I also did some voiceovers. I did a voiceover for um, a play, which I was at. No, the, no, the movie, I played a, a, no, I played a teenager boy. And for the, pl for the, for the voiceover play, I played a 10-year-old boy. It's weird. Yeah, 10-year-old, 10-year-old boy. Um, I was the voice of a 10-year-old. And um, so that was pretty interesting. Um, it was fun working on, on uh, and I did a couple of independent films. One of them came out on, on uh, IFC, so International Film uh, Channel. Um, but my ultimate favorite, I will say, all of them I loved and I enjoyed very much because I make sure like I do things that you know I, I love and I enjoy, right? Which is very important, right? For you guys to do that as well, like do things that you're passionate about. Um, I loved working on the first element. It was so much fun. Like Chris Tucker was hilarious. Bruce Willis, that's another story. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> he already knows, I already called him out. Oh. Oh no, but he loves me now. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a good thing. But I loved, I really enjoyed working on The Fifth Element. It was a, a lot of fun. And, uh, and one of the biggest highlights from that too for me was um, it was my first ever like, like acting ever. I never took any classes. No, I took classes twice and I got kicked out of the class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of mouthed up. That's another story. But anyways, yeah, I got kicked out of the acting class and I never really, so I never really took acting classes. And, um, and then I ended up getting that gig. And um, even how I got it was just like crazy. Um, I met with Luke Basson and uh, we were having a meeting. But the meeting was talking about like volleyball of all things. <laughs> Right? We never even spoke about the film, and then when it came time for the film, he was like, yeah, so the reason why I wanted to meet you was, well, he said it in this French accent, was, uh, you know, for a movie, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then he was like, yeah, I want you to test for the part. I'm like, uh-uh, I ain't testing. You love me. <laughs> <laughs> so just book it, just book it, okay, because you love me. And he was like, no, but I gotta test it. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> right? And it was this back and forth, back to thing, but it was hilarious, and then he, he ended up just, giving me the opportunity without testing me, which is insane. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was really, really cool. And then after we finished the filming, um, uh, Gautier was the one that did the costumes yeah. for The Fifth Element, which was, I didn't know this as well until when I got there. Um, no, not when I got there, before that. Because he was the one that gave Luke my information. Uh, but anyhow, okay. um, after the film, um, they chose an actor, a new actor that they thought did a really good job for their first time. And uh, I was that one chosen, which was super cool. And I had the opportunity to go to all the premieres with them. So I did Cannes. Oh, by the way, I tripped on the um, red carpet. It was so bad. I was wearing this, this sick Gautier gown. And, and, and I'm like Gautier's date along with this other model named Jin, who was like another Gautier's muse. Oh my gosh, I literally like tripped, I like, almost fainted on, on the red carpet because I was so in shock and in awe that I was walking like the Cannes red carpet. It was, oh, it was such an embarrassment. <laughs> Gautier literally had to like lift me up. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm like, I want to pee though, I really want to pee. <laughs> but anyways, so that's the film side, I know I'm going on, but I'm giving you guys a lot here. <laughs> that's the film side, the TV side, um, I was a judge and a, a model coach on, on Canada's Next Top Model. Yeah. That was really cool because my passion is, one of my passions um, my, is training aspiring models. So that was just like the best opportunity. I was a judge and I was a model coach, but for me, I was, I was loving the fact of being more so the model coach because I get to work you know, with the models directly, which is a big thing for me, because like I said, my passion is to train aspiring models. So um, I did that, and, and then I did like a lot of the TV stuff as well, like I did um, Revamped, which I worked with like um, everyday women that like went through some turbulent like situations in their lives, like women that got like dumped by their husbands, um, or like, you know, they're having like 
like an eating disorder or something and all of that. I worked with those women on that show, which was a really, really like amazing opportunity as well too. And also a passion as well too, because it was like building self-esteem and confidence by way of them channeling their inner supermodel. So, so that was cool. And now um, I'm doing TV again. I'm doing more, even more TV. I've done a lot of TV stuff and now I'm doing America's Next Top Model. I'm actually the Woo! model coach. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How has that been? Oh my gosh. It's thank you. It's been amazing because again I get to work with models, aspiring models, new models, and I get to, you know, do to give to uh, I get to share with them what I did for myself. Because I do believe that the opportunities that you get in life is not for you to keep for yourself. It's for you to also share, right? The obstacles that you go through, right? The challenges that you go through is not for you to keep for self, right? It's, it's to build you, uplift you in a certain way, but also build you and, and, and make you and mold you into what you're meant to be, but also help you help others who are also dealing with, you know, you know, the ch like challenges and obstacles as well. So when Tara reached out to me about America's Next Top Model, I was just so floored. I, 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 I'm still in awe by it. Um, and she was like, you know, I really love what you're doing for the youths. Um, she said the reason why she really, really wanted me on the show, other than me being, you know, a dope runway walk and um, cat walker, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, and a dope model. She was like, you know, the fact that you like, you know, give back to so many youths and so many people. She goes, that's why I really, really had to have you as the new you know, runway coach and model coach on the show. And I'm just like, you know, I'm really thankful and grateful to the Most High, the Most High God. Uh, that's, you know, um, for, you know, like blessing me with this opportunity because it's, it's definitely a major blessing. I, would, I never thought in a million years, you know, the little six-year-old Stacy that dreamt to be a model would, you know, be on the show, having these opportunities, period. I never thought that. So to be able to like give back what I did for myself to others, it's like the ultimate for me. It's the best, it's the, it's the most, it's, it's, it's what it is. It, it is what it's all of this is about. What is all of what I went through, this is what it's all, that's what it's all for. You know what I mean? It's not for me to be like, oh yeah, I'm fly, I'm fabulous and all that. It's for really me to, give back so it's it's been the best sorry don't be sorry that's awesome <laughs> well stacy i mean you do give back in so many different ways and one of the things i want uh, you to share is um your walk this way with your workshops and your camp tell us about these programs that you do oh thank okay uh, so um walk this way workshops incorporated is um there's two parts to my company one part is the the, the modeling side where i teach and train aspiring models all aspects of the modeling industry. So not only the prettiness of the industry, not just all, you know, runway, like I said earlier, and photo posing and all that stuff. Um, I teach like the business, okay? And I give you, I give the, 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 the students the real deal about the business, what they need to do, how they need to deal with their finances, how they need to, uh, um, how they need to deal with their agencies or their agents, right? How they need to present themselves, how they need to carry themselves, right? As well as, you know, you know, being like, you know, a great runway walker, you know, a great photo poser, right? Also, it's not just for high fashion models. I train in all aspects of modeling. So high fashion, commercial mm -hmm. modeling, um, lifestyle modeling, right? All of that. So I train in all, fast, uh, in all aspects of the modeling industry and I teach how to get in the business and everything about the, in the business as to, you know, being a business man or woman in the industry. Uh, so that's one side of it. So that's the workshops. Yep. The other part of it is my camp, which is another thing that's just ah, so cool, so dear to me. So every summer I give um, 25 to 30 girls and I'm going to open it up soon to both boys and girls. We're right now it's girls. Um, I give 25 to 30 girls a free two week camp every summer. And at this camp, they get to meet different mentors like from fashion, um, entertainment, uh, um, arts. Uh, business, education, all of that. Um, they get to, each day they get a different mentor from these fields, right? And the mentor tells your story, right? Of like what it took for them to get to where they're at today. And also give them a hands-on workshop as to how to get into their industry. So I'm really, really like just super, you know, excited about it because 
Like again, this all all of this started, the Walk This Way Workshops Incorporated all started where you know, I was doing everything myself. I didn't have somebody to guide me, to mentor me. I never had that, right? And I've always wanted that. And then I met all these other people as far as models on my journey that didn't have that as well. I was quite shocked. I thought it was like, you know, me because, you know, I'm so different looking and all of that, but it wasn't the case. It was a lot of people that's going through that and are struggling through that. And so I would share my the information that I found for myself, I would share with them. So that's how it all started. And then from there, like, you know, also with, with the girls with the camp, you know, like a lot of these girls are like from certain hoods, right? And I came from the hood, both in Jamaica and in Canada, right? I was raised in the hood, right? So I, you know, it's certain, you know, it's those types of like communities that I take these girls from, right? And give them these opportunities because they will never get, I shouldn't say never, but to be honest, like they're not getting those opportunities. And this actually came out of the mouths of these youths. When I used to do speaking, when I did speaking, speaks at schools, how the walk camp started was, they would come to me, like first was this girl came up to me, she was like, you know, Miss Stacy, you're the only, <laughs> she was like, you're the only person that ever comes back and sees us. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, you know, and she named off a couple other people that made a name for themselves within their respective fields. And she said, well, this person never came back. That person never came back. And I was like, really? And then she's like, yeah. And she's like, you know, and because of that, like, she's like, I felt bad because she's like, you know, this is where I came from and this is where that person came from. And I would think that they would thank you. And I would think that they would, um, that they would, um, you know, come back and, you know, like teach me what to do. But nobody ever comes back. You're like the first person that, and the only person that's ever come back. And that's how the camp was created. Um, that little girl started telling me, and then you know, a couple of it, like a couple of the people started telling me as well. And um, I was just so floored by it, and I was like, you know, I, I'm not going to be one of those people. I'm going to make sure that I come back, and also I want to make sure that I create something, right, to like, you know, give you guys the opportunity to come somewhere, right, where you could like meet these people. So what I did was I went to those people. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I went to those people. So I went to certain people, like, you know, within the respective fields, within the fashion industry, and I'm talking like celebrities. I went to them, I'm like, could you give me two hours? Of your, could you give me two hour, hours of your time? And they're like, sure, I'm like, great, because it's gonna be me and 30 little girls, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, so, and that's how the camp started. And I'm really just like super excited about it. I'm gonna, it started off in Toronto, mm -hmm. but my goal is, and I'm gonna start it, I've been trying to bring it to my country, Jamaica, um, which I'm working on getting it to Jamaica this summer, uh, this coming summer. And I'm gonna bring it to the Caribbean islands because I do believe that it's very, it's necessary everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I know in, you know, in my island, and my island and in other Caribbean islands, it's really, really, really needed as well because people really don't go back here and do these things. So I'm gonna bring it to them. Right, so that's the goal, and also bring it to LA and New York and all that. And hopefully Montreal. Oh yeah, oh, c come on now, <laughs> right, Montreal, yes, yes, of course, yes. Yeah. Canada's already done, yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've obviously, you're a chameleon, you've done so many different aspects in the modeling world with, um, you know, helping other people. How do you maintain to just stay on top constantly? What is, do you have like a, obviously you have an inner strength, but what is your advice to, to maintain that kind of career? I think, um, no, my advice is um, you need to treat it as a business. Mm. So what I did was once I got my foot in the door as a model, I used it as a stepping stone for other things uh, uh, that I wanted to do within the entertainment industry, right? So, you know, I did want to try acting and, you know, give that a try, give acting a try. Mm -hmm. So um, I went for that. As soon as I got the opportunity to get signed to an agency, and, and you guys, whoever is, 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 is there anybody that's, I'm sure there's, is there people that's in there that's interested in modeling or, yeah? Okay, so or even if it's just whatever, modeling, whatever it is that you wanna do, right? You get your foot in the door somehow, right? Just run with it, okay? Don't just like focus on, you know, okay, I'm going into be an accountant and that's it. Don't just focus on that, you know what I'm saying? Expand. So that's why I feel like I have longevity mm -hmm. and a lot of others as well as had this like type of longevity in it because I treated it as a business, right? I went in there, I'm like, all right, so I got a, you know, whatever amount of trial, whatever time, it doesn't even matter. I got, 
I got signed a little bit, <laughs> right? I'm gonna make the best of this and make it last as long as possible. So I, you know, tried acting. Um, I didn't want it to do music, but the music kept on coming at me. It was really, you know. So then I tried it too. I'm like, you know what? Well, I do have a voice, <laughs> right? And I do have a look. <laughs> like, Let me give it a try, right? Um, uh, what else? And then, and then, you know, um, my company. The fact that you know, I was able to like, you know, teach aspiring models. You know, I, you know. I use all of that as a, I use getting my foot in the door as a stepping stone right. for other things. So don't like be stuck on just the one thing, right? When you get into whatever industry that you want to do, right? Don't be just stuck on it, right? Like really, especially if it's modeling, because it's a short-lived industry, a short-lived career, right? If you want to be a model, like, like I said, usually you get about a three months. If you have like some sort of like um, uh, success in the industry, it's like maybe three to five years, maybe five years. Right, so because you know, there's only a few that like you know have that type of longevity in right. it. But the reason why they have that longevity is because they treat it as a business, right? They didn't go up in there and then they start going partying and all of that and just you know. I mean, I did some partying. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like I wasn't living, eating, breathing partying. And I was like, okay, let me go to this party because you know, hmm, this AD's these agents are gonna be there or these right. clients are gonna be there. Like certain people are gonna be there that if they see me, they're gonna be like, hmm, okay. I like how she looks. You know, I want to book her. You know what I'm saying? Be very strategic as to where you go, right? Don't just go to some like re regular random party, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like Turn that all day, every day long. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Turn that party into a casting. <laughs> you know, so so that that's my advice. Like yeah. to treat it as a business. Where um um, and it's really the most important thing, as well too. Number one, you gotta love yourself because you're gonna get so much rejection, and not just in modeling in general. Right, but in modeling, I would say because that's you know my career, um, you're gonna get a lot. You're gonna hear so many no's. It is insane to kind of, and you will hear no's in different types of ways. <laughs> like I heard some no's. It was like hell no, f no, god no, uh, no. Like it was all these different kind of no's. Me no's, wicked no's. Like you're just gonna get no's, and it's like a lot, <laughs> and it's gonna be a lot, and it will take its toll on you. Like I've, I've experienced you know, um, models that are friends of mine or not friends of mine, that they just didn't, they couldn't, they didn't know what to do with themselves. They literally lost it. You know, they would, you know, some people would turn to drugs, alcohol, um, you know, depression, like just straight up depression where they just like, they lock away themselves in the room and it's like, they wouldn't come out, like it was really bad. So it's really important for you to have a thick skin, right? But most importantly, very important for you to love yourself. You have to love yourself and just be ready to, you know, walk away and not be afraid to walk away if it doesn't work out. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't like expect to, don't go in there with like expectations and like expect to get that and you know, and if you don't get it, you lose it. No, you gotta love everything about you and just be up in there, just go, get the opportunity to go in there and you know, if you get the opportunity to like be a part of the industry, treat it as a business, but be ready, right? In case they turn around one day and say, you know what, we don't want to represent you anymore. Be able to like, you know, walk away with your head held high and, you know, with that confidence of it's okay, it's gonna be fine. You know what I mean? Like be able to walk away and know that you are good within yourself, okay? Because, yeah, it's, it's a tough, tough business, modeling especially. For sure. But this goes for a lot of industries as well too, pretty much, right? So, you know, just, you know, just, just love and own who you are, right? And just be prepared and just have that confidence and strong sense of self to know what you're going into and now know that if you have to come out of it, you're good when you come out of it. I don't talk a lot of it. I love it. It's so inspiring, Stacey. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, other than Grace Jones, who or what inspires you? Who are, you know what inspires me when I go home to Jamaica? <laughs> well, I think it's an island thing, but like for some reason, when I go home to Jamaica and I see like, like even just the, the people just walking down the street, right? Oh, here my pot are coming out right now. The people that are walking down the street, okay. I know you're not gonna understand a word I'm saying like. So the people that are walking down the street, right? And like the thing about my peoples is like they're, you know, some of them can't, they can't sing. But they will, they will be singing on top of their lungs, like walking down the street, but they're just, they're just, there's this energy about them, this vibrancy about them, right? And it's like, they're just so happy. And even when they're not happy, it's like, you're happy? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you're walking and it's like they have this attitude, they have this swag. Is that still a word? 
know what I'm saying? Is it so? You know, like they have this attitude about them, right? And like when I go home and I see my peoples, like it gives me this, it, it, it brings out that energy out of me too, right? Um, also like, you know, the C, the, the, the kids, oh, the kids when they're going to school, in their school uniform, oh my gosh. <laughs> And they're like walking and trying to chew in their bubble gum and blowing their bubbles. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> you never pass it, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, it just, I can get goosebumps just like thinking about it. Like, it just, there's this thing about my people and the culture and how we move, you know, and just how we, you know, just how we are. Like, so that really does inspire me big time. I'm not just saying that because I'm Jamaican. I'm really saying that. It's the real truth, right? But it's a Caribbean thing too. It's a Caribbean thing. Right? So, yeah, man. So that's number one. What else um, What else inspires me? I don't know. Give me something. So, I don't know if you inspire me. Right? Yeah. Even different types of people inspire me. Like, I'm the type of person, I love to meet people. So, you know, and I'm like, I would give you like the time of day plus two years. Uh, <laughs> so, like, meeting different types of mm -hmm. people, traveling, you know, like, experience, experiencing different cultures, you know, foods, uh, people. Like, I love it. I, I just, I revel in it. Rebel, like I recently went to China. Oh my gosh. You went with Evan, I know that. Yes, yeah, yeah we, when we went to China. Oh my God, that was just the absolute best. First, they were actually running away when they saw me. Because we're like, what the hell? <laughs> and they literally ran. It was hilarious. Like, there was one other black guy, there was a black guy in the group, so, you know, because they don't consider me black because I'm too light. But whatever, that's another story. <laughs> There's a black guy with, with like the dreads, whatever, right? And they saw him and they were literally bowing to him. Yeah, they, like, like, we're, like black people in China is like gods. Like they were literally bowing to it. Me when they saw me, psh, they're like ah, and they run. Right? And then and then what they do is they kind of they run up like a ways away, and then afterwards they stop and they're like, and they you know, it's like is she real? What is she? <laughs> and then they start slowly walking up to me, and then they walk around me, and they're like. Oh, you know, <laughs> but I was enjoying, this was like the best, I'm like, this trip is amazing, the food was on the chain too, by the way, that's another story, but uh, it was just, it was an amazing experience, so stuff like that, like, right. inspires me, I went to this small town, and apparently I was told that my ancestors, I'm like, really, in part Chinese? Oh, okay, <laughs> but like, apparently, they are, like, the people from the town was telling, uh, said that I'm, I'm, I'm my, my, aunt, what is it, my ancestor? Ancestry. My, yeah, my ancestors are part uh, are, are from that region. Okay. Yeah, I, I was. They literally just flocked to me and was just like gobbling me up or whatever. I'm like, what's going on? And they told me they're like, yeah, apparently they feel that your um, ancestors are from here. Hmm. I it was weird, but it was fabulous. And we danced like they did, we did a traditional dance awesome. and all of that, like in their traditional. I wanted a traditional outfit, but. They wouldn't allow me to wear my stilettos. That's another story. You and your stilettos. <laughs> but you know, so like, you know, like traveling, yeah. um, meeting all different types of people, um, the languages, like all of that. I was actually learning some Mandarin. Mm -hmm. This is another thing I'll say to models. Whenever you guys travel, learn the language, like at least some of it, learn something, right? And actually like, you know, when you go on castings, use that. They love that stuff, mm. right? The clients would eat you up. Oh, she took the time out to learn, you know, a little bit like how to say hi, my name is so and so, how are you? You know what I mean? And it's a pleasure to be here. Just even to learn just to say that in that language goes away, like goes such a far away. Yeah. So those are the things I know I'm talking so much. No, we love it. That's why you're here. We want to hear you. Um, you mentioned a little bit about this project that's coming out. The movie. Oh, the movie. Yeah. Give us a little of that. Tell us just a little. Uh, Okay, first of all, I'm in shock still. <laughs> so, um, the director of America's Next Top Model, Ken Mock, um, uh, when I was up for America's Next Top Model, because I had to meet with the executives and all that, um, I went into the meeting, and the first question he asked me was, tell me your story. And as you guys just experienced, or experienced it right now, I talk a lot. So I literally told my story <laughs> from beginning to end. <laughs> and they were just, it was, it was, I didn't realize, but they were like bawling, like crying, laughing, you know, owing and eyeing. And then when I was finished, um, I was crying at times to whatever and all of that stuff too. Went through the different emotions. And um, the executives were on the big screen and 
I was with the executives in the VH1 studio in New York, and they were just like, and then when I was finished, Ken Ma goes, I'm doing your movie. I'm like, what? So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. I'm like, you know, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I used to take the talk, you know, the, you know, people love to talk, give me some action, you know what I mean? So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then, I, and then he's like, no, I'm going to do your movie. I'm like, really? And I was like, okay, whatever. And then I get, you know, everything was going through Top Model, and um, I was shooting Top Model in New York, and I get a phone call. We're doing your movie. Uh, let's have a meeting. And it's been like he literally got on it and been running with it since. So now it's official. The movie is happening. Got the green light. And um, right now we're casting for two Stacys. Um, well, we're casting for the movie in general, but we're casting for two Stacys, um, which is like the most important uh, of the film actors. So two unknown actors, actresses, uh, one to play Stacy, here this is to me, one to play me <laughs> um, at the age of uh, 15 to 18, uh, 15 to tw no, 18 to 23 years old, and another one to play me at 10 years old. So that's happening right now. I'm just I, like, can I tell you, Michael? I don't know what to do myself. I'm just so in awe, uh, you know, and I'm just so thankful and grateful because, like I said, I never thought in a million years, you know, little Jamaican Stacy, you know, all, all of this would be happening. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you.